here we go we're going to make this fun little bag knitted in three pieces on the circular knitting machine one long panel and two short panels for the handles works great as a book bag <laughs> and as a project bag for your other knitting and fun projects so let's get started on this and see how easy it really is to knit and felt your own bag i'm using the wool of the andes this is clarity and this is icicle heather these are 100 percent wool and will felt really well so we're going to try and make a felted bag and this is going to be simple simple construction We're going to make a large panel. That's going to be the body of the bag. We're going to make two narrower panels that will get sewn on to the top edge on both ends, and that will make the handle. This is, uh, like I said, super simple, and we're going to get started. First off, we're going to cast on our panel the maximum number that we can go, which is about 43 on this. I do not run in actual panel mode. I stay in circular mode the entire time just because I don't like hitting that, that end, but I'm also very careful to make sure to, uh, to watch when I'm getting to the end of a line. I'm casting on with some waste yarn. Let's see here. Yeah. I'm not going to be doing any increasing on the edges, straight edges. So be very careful on your edges, making sure that the yarn is being taken down. When you get all the way to the edge right here, make sure it goes down. It has to come over that little bump. If it doesn't, it won't uh, carry over properly. And then make sure that this needle grabs that yarn and pulls it down and go back. It needs to make sure and pop down. See how it popped down off of this edge right here, off of this bump, pop down, go past. It's got to come under this tooth here or this uh, finger and then go back. And truthfully, that's all you need to know to make panels. And you'll get really good at this. I've got several different videos on the channel that use panels for their construction. All right, so right now, see how this is coming up and is stuck? You have to push it down and make sure it falls down below that bump right there. All right, I'm gonna finish. down and back. All right, that's about five rows of waste yarn. You're gonna put one more row, and this is going to be just something obnoxiously different than everything else you're using for the color, because you wanna be able to see it. right to there drop that down we're going to use the clarity wool of the andes for the body of the bag this is the main panel of the bag i'm going to do 150 rows we'll see if how far uh, 50 grams will get me i might have to use a little bit more i don't know but this wool felts really well. If you want to learn how to do other felted projects, I have another one. It's the uh, Simple Felted Hearts. So check that out. So 
So see, it dropped down over that bump. So now I'm knitting that stitch nice and tidy. Okay. So I'm just gonna go back and forth doing these nice and tidy edges. I slow down when I get to the edges so that I can make sure that, that yarn is dropping down. There we go, and going back. This is a 48 needle circular knitting machine, the Centro. I do have a 46 needle Addy. You can do the same thing. Um, I would just do 41 for my, uh, for the width of my bag instead of 43. And if you have a hand loom uh, that's like 45, you know, pegs, you can do this on that also. Just making a panel. All right, I'll meet you back here when I have uh, the 150-ish <laughs> and I'm casting off. We got to 86 rows on one skein of Wool of the Andes yarn. So we're going to grab the next skein and just join right in. It's right on the edge. I will eventually tie them off. I'm cutting it off. I'm going to grab a, a zip strip here and put that on. Alrighty, so the zip strip is on. I'm going to do, you know, five or so rows of waist yarn, five or 10, whatever. Just gonna go back and forth a few times. Oh, shoot. I didn't want to, well, okay, fine. I didn't want to do this yarn as my waist yarn, but luckily I have uh, the zip strip on there so I can see where this is because this is the exact same yarn. That is um, unfortunate, but I can use it for closing the ends and sewing the sides. So it's not a big deal. It's not going to get wasted, even though it's called waist yarn. All right, good enough. There we go. Oops. All right, so there's my, the body of the bag. I'm not worrying about finishing the ends yet. I'm going to go ahead and cast on waist yarn. So I'm making the handles with the Wool of the Andes Icicle Heather. I have a 50 gram ball here. I do have more if I need it. I don't think I'm going to because I'm only going to be doing a total of 60 rounds. So we'll see how that goes. I am just casting on. 
I did put a zip strip. I'm going to put waist yarn in the middle. So I'm doing 30 rounds. I'm going to do five rounds of waist yarn, a zip strip, five rounds of waist yarn, and then 30 rounds. Uh, doing it that way, I'll be able to pull the zip strip and have the two pieces without having to cast on again. Yep, I dropped a stitch in the middle of that uh, right here. <laughs> no big deal. It didn't affect the main yarn. So I'm not worried Let's about strand it. strand from that extra yarn. I'm going to slip through and make a slip knot. So you're going for that loop that's between your waist yarn. You don't want it to be... Uh, you don't want to be catching the loop that's in front of it. You want to make sure you're getting that loop that's between your waist yarn. So I'm going under that loop, wrapping over, pulling through, pulling through, chaining one. And that is it. Pull through, pull through, chain one. So under, wrap over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook, and chain one. I'm going to do that all the way across. And then we will pull out that zip strip so we can separate the two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of that just so that they're both bound off. Because it's got to be done anyway, right? <laughs> All of the ends are closed up now. All of the ends are sealed, finished, 
ready for the waste yarn all to be taken off. So we're going to go with the first one and pull the zip strip. Just make sure that we're not twisted up or knotted on the other end. There we go. Whoop! That one's gone. And now we can pull that all off. Awesome. Look at that. Okay, so both the ends are done. Now we need to take this one apart, right? And you're going, it's kind of difficult if you just do a stripe of waste yarn without that zip strip. You have to have the zip strip so that you've got live stitches to take it apart. So now we're going to pull this and then look at that. So, so cool. And now we can just pull off the waste yarn. So there's one. So now I have the two handles completely, completely ready to go. So I have to finish off this end, the ends of the main body. I'll finish those and we'll come back and get it sewn together. So what I'm going to do is attach the handle ends. So I will stitch it down the first time going across. I'm going to leave a space for the opening where the handle uh, lifts up basically and then finish off going across. Then I will fold this down on the inside so it ends up being doubled for the handle part. And the part that I skip down here, I will stitch together like that. The handles will be stitched down already. We will stitch the ends of the handles together and stitch down the side. Stitch the ends of the handles together and stitch down the sides. So stitch down any way you want. It does not have to be super tidy, but you want to stitch the right side of the handle to the right side. Of the bag. I'm going to go across, match these up, and I'm thinking, let's see here, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Stitches eleven. Stitches in on both ends like that, leaving a gap. All right, we're going to do that. on however you want. It's going to get uh, shrunk down. So you're not going to see the definition once it's all done. So I'm going to do kind of a modified uh, mattress stitch just because that's something I'm comfortable with doing. You can do a whip stitch. You could do a running stitch. However, you know, whatever way you want to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven.
we're to the point now where we need to get this edge folded down and we're going to stitch it down to the body then we're going to stitch the handle to itself in the opening like that and then we will stitch it down the rest of the way to so. the body that's what's going to happen again stitch it down whatever way makes sense to you I have already sewn one side all together, so the ends and like it was a tube. So these ends here, like this, I sewed this side here, and then I worked it around and sewed this side. <laughs> I'm being fiddly. You don't have to be. It's just what I did. I'm using some of the same yarn that is on the body of the bag. And I'm doing a mattress stitch. Now, don't don't stitch this edge to this edge, or you'll not not be coming together right. Right. So the edges that naturally sit next to each other, do those first. And I'm doing a mattress stitch, so I'm starting. And you know, let me just get this yarn attached. this end right here, I'm going to leave a little bit long. That's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going under a couple stitches and then the side that's next to it, I'm gonna do that here and kind of mattress stitch this together. So that way you don't see the, you don't see the stitches. It's invisible. A little fiddly thing that I'm doing. You don't have to. You can stitch this together however you want. I'm doing a mattress stitch because that's what I want to do. And I'm doing a modified mattress stitch. It's not a perfect mattress stitch. It's not going to, you know, totally line up everything. But I am unrolling this so that my outside edges are together. Stitch this together however you want. Don't, don't worry about making it exactly the same way I am. This is a simple project and you could just flat seam those ends together. And what I mean by that is you could have, I could have just held everything together and just stitched around the whole thing and gone down the end. But, you know, this is what I'm doing. And I started at the, the seam edge here where the handle was attached to the body because since I'm going up and then coming back down in a loop, there, you can see that a little bit better now, how this is coming together. See, I've already got the backside stitch. I was thinking about making a little eyeglass case and, you know, because I do wear eyeglasses. And I was also thinking of a cell phone bag, um, like a little crossbody bag that you would have your cell phone, maybe a, a pen and um, a credit card or wallet, you know, small wallet. I like the idea of making things that are small and useful with our knitting machines, things that aren't just hats, because you know, there's uh, the rest of the year that you're not needing hats. I like my, I like making the sweaters. If you want to do sweaters, I have uh, three different sweaters. I've got a cape on the, on this channel. So You know, just do what you 
do what you want. I'm enjoying the process of, like I said, coming up with things that aren't sweaters. So I have stuffed toys, little softies, the kind of the amigurumi. Oh, here, look, don't pull down unless you want to pull down and have it be a, you know, a design feature, but that's not a design feature I want. So I need to work that back up so that it's loose. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. Just give it a little overhand knot just to make sure it doesn't slip. Then I will work this edge or work this tail into the edge. Now we're just going to go down the side. All right, so before I lock that stitch down, I'm going to pull all the slack out and then restretch. So now that lays nice and flat. Wow. This is gonna be so fun, getting it all felted down. So now we have this is from the inside. We're going to grab it, turn it right side out. This is the lovely bag before it's been felted. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to see what it looks like when it's felted. So here we are. This is the bag before felting, and I have drawn it out on this piece of paper. It is uh, surprising how big this bag is right now. Right now we are looking at 12 inches from side to side and a total of 15 and a quarter inches from the top to the bottom, this part here. The opening space is four and a half inches. That's that's to here and the space from the bottom of the handle to the bottom of the bag is 13 and a half inches and now we're going to go and put this in hot water and a little bit of soap and squish it around and get it all nice and felted you can throw this into a washing machine and felt it down i just I like having my hands on it. This is hot water from the tap. It is around 130 to 140 degrees. If you've ever put a sweater in the wash or wet into a hot dryer, you know how it's going to felt. This is 100% wool. It is not super wash. Wool of the Andes felts really, really well. You want to get it in the hot water and let it soak. I'm going to put a little bit of this open nature um, dishwashing liquid. It's fine. It's a biodegradable, no phosphates. And it just helps the fibers to sort of slip past each other and then start to bind. My house is 80 years old. So this sink is, it's very disgusting looking. It's clean. It really is clean. But we had had one of those um, bathtub refinishing things in our house. The tub still looks great but the sink wasn't guaranteed. It was just, let's try it and see what happens. Um, yeah, <laughs> not the, it, it wasn't the best decision. I'm really not happy with that decision now, but at the time it looked really pretty. 
So now I'm just going to work with this and I will let it record while I'm doing it. I will fast forward through that. But I'm just going to work with this and then I'll know exactly how long it took. Yes, this water is hot. <laughs> And I want it to felt. I want it to, I want it to fuzz. I want it to start linking up together. It takes a little bit, but I like the process. And that's one of the things with doing this by hand is that you can, you can wring it out. You can check it. It's not like you're running a big load of a washing machine and using all that extra water. I am going to do a rinse. So I've used probably two gallons of water so far. I'm gonna empty that. And I'm going to do a cold water rinse. Oh, yeah. That feels pretty good. Right, I have a salad spinner that I only use for crafting. And I'm going to use that to spin out to spin out some of the water that's in that if I can Ugh. might there we go I wish this salad spinner had a handle on it, but at least the lid clamps down. So we'll take this off, take a look, see how much water came out. Whoa, that's a lot of water. Look at all that water, whoops, all that water. Oh my goodness. Wow. Now at this point right right now, you can do a little bit of stretching, a little bit of shaping. Oh, this is going to be a perfect project bag. And now I'm going to roll this in a towel and stomp on it. All right, let's see how much this shrunk. Oh, look at that. So if we line it up with the handle, we did not shrink as much side to side as I thought we would, but we definitely shrunk north and south, not east and west. So side to side, it is now 11 inches. It was 12 inches. So it only shrunk one inch side to side on the main body. The main body right here is 11 inches tall it was 13 we're 11 inches for this part 
it was two and three quarter inches on the top and now it's an inch and a half so we did lose about three inches so it was 15 and a half now it's about 12 and a half so we lost about three and a half inches in height and about an inch in width probably could felt this down farther i don't want to i want this to be a usable bag size but now I've got this beautiful little bag. Make sure to click that like button and uh, leave me a comment and let me know if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more felting projects, knitting and felting on with our circular knitting machines, I would love to share more of that with you because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> So we'll see you guys around here. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. If you really found a lot of value in this, you can leave me a super thanks. If you uh, don't want to leave a super thanks, but you did like it a lot, click that like button and share it with a friend. That helps out my channel too. We'll see you around here really soon. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself and be kind. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.